for foreign nationals were arrested and charged Thursday with transporting suspected Iranian-made weapons on a vessel intercepted by U.S. naval forces in the Arabian Sea last month. Two Navy SEALs died during the mission. The criminal complaint unsealed Thursday in U.S. District Court in Richmond alleges that the four defendants, who were all carrying Pakistani identification cards, were transporting suspected Iranian-made missile components for the type of weapons used by Houthi rebel forces in recent attacks. The flow of missiles and other advanced weaponry from Iran to Houthi rebel forces in Yemen threatens the people and interests of America and our partners in the region, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco said in a news release. U.S. officials said that Navy Special Warfare Operator First Class Christopher J. Chambers was boarding the boat on January 11th and slipped into the gap created by high waves between the vessel and the SEAL's combatant craft. As Chambers fell, Navy Special Warfare Operator 2nd Class Nathan Gage Ingram jumped in to try to save him, according to U.S. officials familiar with what happened. Two Navy SEALs tragically lost their lives in the operation that thwarted the defendants charged today from allegedly smuggling Iranian-made weapons that the Houthis could have used to target American forces and threaten freedom of navigation and a vital artery for commerce, Monaco said. Attorney General Merrick B. Garland pledged that the Justice Department will use every legal authority to hold accountable those who facilitate the flow of weapons from Iran to Houthi rebel forces, Hamas, and other groups that endanger the security of the United States and our allies. Mohammed Palawan is charged with attempting to smuggle advanced missile components, including a warhead he is accused of knowing would be used by the Houthi rebels against commercial and naval vessels in the Red Sea and surrounding waters. He is also charged with providing false information to U.S. Coast Guard officers during the boarding of the vessel. Palawan's co-defendants, Mohammed Mazar, Gufranola, and Azar Mohammed, were also charged with providing false information. Palawan's attorney, Assistant Supervisory Federal Public Defender Amy Austin, said Palawan had an initial appearance in U.S. District Court Thursday and is scheduled to be back in court Tuesday for a detention hearing. She declined to comment on the case. Right now, he's just charged with two crimes and we're just at the very beginning stages. And so all we know is what's in the complaint, Austin said when reached by phone Thursday. According to prosecutors, Navy forces boarded a small, unflagged vessel, described as a Dow, and encountered 14 people on the ship on the night of January 11th in the Arabian Sea off the Somali coast. Navy forces searched the Dow and found what prosecutors say was Iranian-made weapons, including components for medium-range ballistic missiles and anti-ship cruise missiles. All 14 sailors on the Dow were brought onto the USS Lewis B. Puller after Navy forces determined the Dow was not seaworthy. They were then brought back to Virginia, where criminal charges were filed against four and material witness warrants were filed against the other 10. According to an FBI affidavit, Navy forces were entitled to board the ship because they were conducting an authorized flag verification to determine the country where the Dow is registered. The Dow was determined to be flying without a flag and was therefore deemed a vessel without nationality that was subject to U.S. law, the affidavit states. According to the affidavit, the sailors on the Dow admitted they had departed from Iran, although at least one of the men initially insisted they departed from Pakistan. The affidavit states that crew members had been in contact multiple times by satellite phone with a member of Iran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard. Burricate reported from Falls Church, Virginia. Lolita C. Balder in Washington contributed.